As we always say with Fight Night Picks, let's get into it, but we also say Flyweight Never Die, and this is one of those fights, I'm crossing both of my fingers that it actually happens, and it happens at Flyweight. We have Hawaii's Tyson Nam taking on Danger Matt Chanel. Matt, this fight was already booked twice last year, and unfortunately for Tyson Nam, they really kind of screwed with his plans. They were supposed to fight back in September. That one fell out because Chanel missed weight, uh, missed it by two pounds and collapsed, so they say behind the scenes, and it ended up Tyson Nam had to wait a week, fight Jerome Rivera on short notice at 135 pounds. He obviously finishes Jerome Rivera. Then the fight gets rebooked for December. That one falls out. Schnell out of that one. So now we get this one in January 2021. For Tyson Nam, he is one of the craziest roads to the UFC. He's in his mid-30s to late 30s now. He's got almost 30 pro fights. He fights Sergio Pettis in his debut. And I don't have to tell you, you know how good Sergio Pettis has looked in the UFC, but not just the UFC in Bellator. The guy looks like he's going to absolutely wreck house. Maybe he's going to be able to beat Juan Archuleta for the belt. But for Tyson Nam, he fights Pettis. He fights Kai Kara France. And then he gets paired up with two guys that have no business fighting Tyson Nam whatsoever. It's almost like Tyson Nam's developing into the new version of a Thomas Almeida. Because you look at the guys who he's lost to. Okay, he lost to Kai Kara France and Sergio Pettis. There's no shame in that. And then, okay, who are your two wins? So you get matched up against a prospect, if you will, who was 3-1 and one at the time. And Zvru Gadashev knocks him out in 32 seconds. And that was when a lot of people started being like, oh, wait, maybe Tyson Nam is really good. And his two losses are just, you know, two losses to guys at the top of the division. Then he comes out and again... You had mentioned this earlier on. Tyson Nam has had two short notice fights in his last two fights. And yes, he's looked really good, but I'm excited to see a full camp Tyson Nam, if you will. You know, there's like C-level Cain Velasquez. Maybe full camp Tyson Nam could be one of those mythical figures of MMA. Matt Schnell does a lot of things better than Tyson Nam, though. And it's a real big question in this fight. Can Matt Schnell get past the early power of Tyson Nam and just sort of get past the big storm, get the fight to the ground where we know Schnell is so good from? Or can Matt, or will Matt Schnell, will he play the striking game with Tyson Nam? That's something that Matt Schnell, really, he just strikes too much for his own good. He's so good on the ground. He's really dangerous. He's got great control from the top position. But the issue is, when he fights the guys like Alejandro Pantoja, when he fights guys like Rob Font, he won't just immediately go for takedowns like he probably should should he'll play the striking game he'll try to set up the jab and the work in his right hand and then work his takedowns into his game where if you just look at his fights against you know jordan espinoza he submitted him smith louis smoke i guess too when he goes for and just kind of has one of those damian maya game plans where it's okay i'm gonna go for single leg takedowns as much as i can and then if i get the fight to the ground then i work my submission game matt schnell's a problem to deal with when he has that game plan the issue is when he goes out there with the pantosia let's get into a brawl kind of mindset he ends up getting clipped against these high level strikers and tom or tyson nam just feels like another opponent who could do that to match now the weird thing about it for pantosia you look at his overall career he fought elias garcia in his third fight People have come to know Elias Garcia on a bigger stage. He fights a guy that we definitely all know by now in Jonathan Martinez at 125 pounds. He beats him. Where the hell is the home for Matt Schnell? I can't figure it out personally. I'm not involved in his camp because, again, it, it switches from Florida to Louisiana to Florida. It's all over the place. He was on the Ultimate Fighter. That was at flyweight. Then he fought Rob Font in the UFC. That was a bantamweight. Will he get knocked out? Well, that's going to happen. Rob Font's a world-class fighter. Just beat Marais in a big fight at 135. He fights Hector Sandoval. He loses that one. So what does he do? He rings off four big wins. So what's the scoop here? Now, I just did the whole pick number three, my lord, thing from Shrek. But overall, he wins four big fights in a row and finishes two of them. Luis Smolka, good fighter. Uh, Jordan Espinoza, good fighter. And then he loses to Pantoja. Good fighter. The fights that he was supposed to have against Tyson Am. Again, botch weight cut, he withdraws. The weight cutting thing bugs me. Like, if you can't do it at 25, then let's see it at 35. For Tyson Am, the poor guy just wants to fucking fight at 125 pounds. Okay. And you look at it, and Adeshev's on short notice because you're supposed to fight Ryan Benoit. So they fight at 135. Adeshev misses weight. He weighs in 138. Buddy. You're 5'5", five, five, and I know, like, it was super short notice. Still got and them hands, though. You're a three-in-one fighter. But, yes, Zaruk Adeshev missed weight for that fight. And then he fights Jerome Rivera, a guy that isn't really known as a bantamweight, and he beats him. And, listen, I feel bad for Zaruk Adeshev and for Jerome Rivera because they're both, they're on this card. Like, we haven't done the predictions for their fights. They're on this card. And I get it. You're in quarantine for most of this whole fight week. You don't really get to enjoy it. But 
they're probably going to see Tyson Am and relive the finishes that Tyson Am threw their way. So the breakfast room at the Marriott and Fight Island has got to be the weirdest place in the world. This fight overall, I love it. Again, we already made a prediction video for this one. We actually disagreed on the picks. I I had Nam, you had Schnell going into it. So let's talk about the odds for this one because Tyson Nam opened a minus 135 favorite. He's now a minus 130. For Matt Schnell, he went from a plus 105. He's now a plus 106. About the same thing. Over on Topology, we have a decent sample size. 469 total votes. 71% going Nam. 74% saying he's going to win by knockout. Do I think Tyson Nam's going to knock out Matt Schnell? It could very well happen. He's a great counter striker. He has a ton of power. And normally his staying power a little bit later as far as that power is concerned. With Matt Schnell... We know how good his jiu-jitsu is. If he's going to fight Tyson Nam, he's got to have great jiu-jitsu. Because Tyson Nam, his takedown defense is quite good. Again, we have a small sample size from the UFC. But if you want to go back and watch some of his fights outside of the UFC, he's taken on Ali Bagutinov. He's taken on Jalgash Shumagulov. Yes, he didn't win that fight. He's fought Jeremiah Labiano that you know from Bellator. He's wow. fought some names that you know. And he's had some pretty good fights. We know that the takedown defense and offense is all right from Tyson Nam. But it is his power that really has gotten him to this point in his career. Overall, are, are you switching the pick? Am I switching my pick? What's your final say on this one? I'm still going to go with Matt Schnell. Now, I don't like the botched weight cuts, if you will, in the past, but there's a lot of fighters who have done that, and I disagree with it at the time, and they go on to have extremely successful careers. Insert Khabib Nurmagomedov. So I do think if he can make weight safely, this is one of those question mark kicks finest if he can make weight and he looks all right doing it i do think matt schnell is going to get the win even if you go back and watch the fight with pantoja he was able to rock pantoja right before he gets knocked out himself and rocking a guy like pantoja again you don't get points for rocking a guy and not winning the fight but still against a really high level striker like that at least he is having success on the feet it's not like just going out there and getting run over in five seconds tyson dam relies a lot more on his accuracy than i would say just his natural one punch power and it's kind of what you had mentioned where he's not relying on the power to carry him into the third round to still let him get knockouts he's relying on the fact that he can just hit your chin really anytime during the fight i think if match now can make the fight really ugly don't just stand at range with tyson nam and exchange kickboxing combinations with him with the overall wrestling with the jiu-jitsu and really with the dirty boxing of match now i think he'll be able to get it done i don't love the odds here as far as just a, a parlay piece a straight pick them so for me i'm gonna wait maybe again till the second round if there even is one and i'm gonna side with schnell in that one but again I gotta wait till I see these guys win because if this is a bad week for Matt Schnell, who knows? Maybe this fight gets scrapped for all different kinds of reasons. Hopefully it doesn't. Again, double fingers crossed from the start of the video. And I don't wish anything bad and I realize I probably already jinxed it. But overall, I love this fight because again, we consider this one as a possible fight of the night. If they both decide to strike, it could be a great fight. If Matt Schnell decides that he wants to grapple, well again, I know how good of a wrestler Tyson Nam is, so we'll see what happens but I do give a slight edge to this point to Matt Schnell. Again, I like the jiu-jitsu. I like the staying power. I don't love the chin, but we'll see how this one goes. And I'm going to have to wait again till I see the weigh-in, till I can have question mark kicks on Tuesday night to look forward to it. But as of now, I'm going with Matt Schnell. Matt, you're going with Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell's probably going with Matt Schnell. I don't think he wants to I lose this so. fight. So really looking forward to this one i think it's a great fight again we're disagreeing with the odds we're disagreeing with the topology votes let us know who you're going with down below in the comment section i think this is going to be a great fight we have neil magny and michael Kesa in our main event warley alvis taking on munir lazez in the co-main so far that one's locked in for that slot so overall keep it locked in with fight and apex man as we always say let's, let's get, get into it, it.